Hey guys, Eric here out at the Bethlehem Golf Club. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the right arm throw during the downswing, questions that come up all the time that we're gonna show you. Before we hop into today's video, just a quick word from today's video sponsor. Hey guys, today I wanna talk to you about the hanger training aid. Now, I don't know if you've seen this or used this before, but it is absolutely my new favorite training aid. This hanger here, creates and controls what I think is the most important part of the swing, which is the wrist angle. It snaps right on. It takes me probably 30 seconds to put on. I could put it right in my golf bag. And best of all, the main trait of a uh, training aid that's really good is you can hit balls with it. You can actually hit balls with it. So I love this hanger training aids. I've been using it probably for the past six to seven weeks in my own game. You may have seen me in videos talk about, hey, I'm really trying to get my left wrist flat at the top. Look at when I do that well, how that sits on my forearm. Now watch when I cut my wrist, how that comes off. Immediate feedback for where my wrist angle is at. I like to use this even during my takeaway. When I set it up here, I like to keep it between my arms during my takeaway, press it against my left wrist for flat left wrist at the top, press it more against. Look at when I press it against that it shallows my shaft, it keeps my club face square to close, helps me hit from inside. So I absolutely love this. I firmly believe that this is good for every single golfer. No one that can have too flat of a left wrist. One of the few things that all good ball strikers have, we're trying to have flat left wrist, right? Super easy to use, incredible immediate feedback with the coupon code gorgonogolf.com. It's only $59 and I can actually hit balls with it and get instant feedback. Yes, I don't know if you can hear that, but that's about as compressed as I can hit a ball. And that's the main point of this hanger, iron compression. You're gonna absolutely love it. We'll put all the details down in the description down below. All right, guys, so with me here in today's video to my left, Mr. Dennis Sales. Dennis, thanks for being here, Thank my friend. Thank you for having me here. Uh, this is our first video we've done with Dennis. Some of you guys know Dennis from CogornoGolf.com. We coach together there online. Dennis has an awesome uh, in-person facility if you're looking for in-person coach. He's got gears, which you're gonna see in today's video. Super, super cool. Uh, Dennis is an awesome coach. I've been following online for a long time. Yeah, like, right. Quite a few years we've been talking. Maybe the only coach who's better at doing feedback stations than me. See if that's true or not today. <laughs> but um, yeah, we're going to talk about the right arm throw. Yes. Um, Dennis and I in our community oftentimes have conversations with a lot of the members. And one of the members had asked about um, the right arm during the downswing. Yes. Which basically is like, hey, as a right-handed golfer, when do my uh, or when does my right arm completely straight right yes. like how do i throw my right arm mm -hmm. uh, and i want to lead off with the answer that we would give for that and then kind of back into the details yeah. a little bit yeah and we're going to show dennis going to show some of the gears here as we go so you guys can see the measurements um, that he has that he's able to do i think the short answer to like when does my right arm fully straighten or throw is about at this 45 degree pass impact position. Yeah, and then when we're looking at it here, we would still be looking at a checkpoint of the uh, forearm, the right forearm still being a little bit above the shaft. So that angle right there carries a lot longer than what most amateurs do. Compared to it looking like? Yeah, and then they're even kind of like starting it way back here or something. Yeah, okay, okay. Right. So yeah. we've got to kind of clean that stuff up to give them a little bit more compression, move low point a little bit more forward, hit the ball a little bit crisper, right? Yeah. So we see that as like, a, hey, if we want to build a good golf swing with the good players do the tour yeah. averages, that's the like short answer, yeah. right? The one sentence mm -hmm. answer. And then of course, there's uh, reasons why you would get there. Yes. And there's how your right arm works yes. the whole way. And so what we want to do in today's video is sort of present a model mm -hmm. of what we would typically see with good players with the right arm from setup to the backswing, downswing, two main issues we see, and then, and then really some drills to fix it. Yes. So we start with the setup position. Right? Someone comes in to see us in person or we're coaching online. I think we probably see the same issues a lot. A lot of times. Right? Too often. So when I take my setup position, here's what I see. And you tell me if you see the same thing, Dennis. At the setup position, I actually see most people get the right arm too straight. Yes. And too internally rotated. Yeah. And then what that does is then that creates a scenario with the arms are a little bit more to the left. Okay. And then this creates a lot of havoc in the backswing loading aspect of it. Yeah. So we'd want to kind of feel a little bit more the external, a little more supinated, so that we can go ahead and get a little bit more of that left forearm in the picture. And then the more we can kind of see it, a little more external, generally speaking, some of the other matching pieces, somebody was going to be more draw biased. That's kind of how we would build 
the, the, the draw pieces into the setup. 100%. I mean, we see this all the time. Yeah. Right? This arm over, elbow mm -hmm. out. And I think when someone does this first piece in the beginning, for a lot of people, like for me in the beginning when I first did it, I mean, it really, it really just to go from internal to neutral is really going to feel quite crazy, yeah, crazy, right? Yeah. Quite external. Though. And the easy thing is if you just kind of look down and just kind of looking at the pocket of your right elbow, just kind of feel like it's going to be pointing a little bit more towards the golf ball. Okay. Whereas when you see a lot of those guys the other way, you'll see the pocket of the elbows kind of pointing more towards the target. Okay, pocket of the elbow more towards the ball. Yeah. Maybe like my right elbow kind of more towards my hip. Yeah, a little, like bit, yeah, a little bit in front, get, trying to get it a little bit closer to where your belly button is, your belt buckle. Belly button, okay. That would work as well, too. And then you said, so that when we look at it from down the line, you can actually see a little bit of the left forearm above yeah, the right arm. Yeah, we just arm. want to see. And again, it, it would depend, right? There's no set answer. I would say that, how much draw do you want? Yeah. Do you want to hit tight ones or do you want to hit bigger ones? And I would say somebody kind of hitting pulls or slices, push slices, that I would go to the other end of the spectrum yep. where I'd want to see way more left arm right yeah, like and then get into like bigger pushes and drawers okay and then start to kind of tame that thing a little bit more until you get to what you like so the higher handicap players maybe want to do that the most in the beginning yeah to change their curve maybe yeah. depending on what they're going and again like again you watch me hit golf balls right-handed like i hit these big big drawers right-handed yeah. i don't do that much left-handed but when i built it was i did not want to see not one ball slice yeah it was all let's get some good compression let's hit some nice solid push draws so i just incorporated all push draws that I possibly could. We do Some of the, the right arm structure yep. so that I could hit it the best. Got it. And then as we work through our backswing, Dennis, we've yep. got the right arm slightly Bennett set up. Yes. So if straight is zero on gears, but 180 in, in my mind, yes. we're going to see. <laughs> um, you might get that confused a couple yeah, of times. Yeah, we'll, we'll go through that. <laughs> There's a slight amount of bend at setup, like we said, right? Yes. Depending upon the player, mm -hmm. maybe 15 degrees or so. It depends on the person. Now, as we work back to the top, as a stock model, what we'll see there is the PGA Tour average on there uh, gets us to about 94 at the top. We'll just call yeah. it 90. 90. Call call it 90. Yeah, easier. So if I go from slightly bent at the setup to about 90 at the top, mm -hmm. and as I'm working through some of my checkpoints here, you know, if it can be that simple, let me just hit one here, Dennis. Mm -hmm. If I'm starting slightly bent and like, how do I get to 90 and what does 90 feel like, which we'll go through, but the first part to unloading the right arm during the downswing would be getting the backswing part correct, yeah. right? And as we go to 90, you know, one of the checkpoints we would use um, online a lot would be like when my left arm's parallel during the backswing, yes. the P3, mm -hmm. where once I get to about here, we saw on there, uh, it was about 60-ish 60 60. on there, which in my world is the 120, yes. right? So we're about, we'll call this 60 degrees or 120 degrees there. Mm -hmm. And then I'm at 90. Yes. And I think one of the really cool things you'll see on here as we're digging into the um, how to throw part. Yes. Is the PGA Tour average has that 90 at the top and it's about 90 yeah. here still. It doesn't change that much. It's it more change. pivot. So my right arm bend isn't wildly going in either direction. Correct. And my, my pivot's the main thing at that point. Yes. And then we see the right arm gradually straightens during the downswing to where we're back at the 120, uh, 130 mark. So mm -hmm. I think it'll be like 60-ish again yes. on there. And then at impact, um, it'll be 20 or 30. So like 160, 150 mm -hmm. with the right arm, right? So a little bit of bend here. And it doesn't reach that 180 mark or the zero mark until we there. get past impact. Yeah. So the simple model would be slightly bent, 90, 180. And we right. gotta remember, right, this is average. This is average. Right, so we've got about 50 tour players, former number one players, major winners, on both the PGA Tour, LPGA Tour, people on the top 25, people who've won on tour. You're going to have some people in there that are gonna bend it a little bit more, and then you're gonna have some people who are a little bit more out, right? I kinda like looking at average, it's not just being specific to one player. Now, if I need to exaggerate a concept, I will pull a player up, but other than that, I'll spend a little bit more time in just tour average, just trying to get people to understand. There's some tolerances to this equation, and I'll show people on the other end of the spectrum, but just understanding where middle is, I think it's a great model I think so to kind too. of go by. Just to have a baseline when we're A baseline, out. yeah. I'm gonna hit one just with, that, just with that kind of simple model. Slightly bent, elbows a little more towards my um, belly button belly for me, because I like a little draw pattern. Yes. I'd rather people overdo than underdo, most yes. people. 90 kind of staying 90 yep. 
and then throwing to 180. And we'll talk about some of the kind of faults and fixes. But let's just do that 90 to throw. Because I think Perfect. a right arm, um, a right arm model there could be a simple version of that. Let me get to 90 and let me throw it towards here. Mm -hmm. But I'd also say when people send their swings in, um, we see two, two of the biggest issues, right? One during the backswing, one during the downswing. Yeah. The backswing issue we see the most in lessons is the right arm gets too bent. Too, too bent. Too fast. Too fast. Yeah. Too bent too fast. And a lot of times that comes from a poor pivot. Yes. Um, so the, the arm is bending as a reaction of the poor pivot, right? Yeah. They're trying to kind of create some, some length of the club to propel the ball down the range. It's like if I only turn this much and my right arm's good, I like swing this far. Yeah. And so then, then how I'm do like, I? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So my right arm's back. So part of us, if we're saying, hey, this right arm for you might be like 45 degrees, we want it 90. Yeah. You're going to need to have a little bit better pivot. pivot motion during the back swing to do that. To, to, to allow the hands to carry a little bit longer to the top. Yeah. And, and better pivot, that's a whole other yes. video, but like, you know, more turning, probably more tilting, a little more extension for most people. Yeah, but again, if you understand how the right arm is supposed to work, it might give you a chance to clean up the pivot. Like versus continuing, it. yeah. Versus continuing doing the same thing about allowing it to bend a little too much. Like uh, as a byproduct of me, if I'm too bent going yeah. towards straighter, I may get the body moving better. You might, yeah. Or well, you might need to get a little bit more pivot help. But and it's I, a start. I know for us during the backswing, we both really like a split grip. Yes. For the wider right kind arm. Kind of like the iron rod kind of concept. Yeah. So if I kind of take my setup here and I put my trail hand down the grip. And I'm not sure if you do it the same way, Dennis, but I, I'm kind of down here, maybe 12 inches. Yeah, maybe so just outside of here. A, a lot for me would be is I'd get somebody at setup, right? And then I would just kind of let everything kind of just reset. So the left arm is on there normal, the right hand is on there. Now I'm going to just move the right hand so that it is perfectly straight. Okay. With that, so it's about 12 inches. Perfect. So then that'll kind of get kind of at the end pressure of the points four and five. Yeah, about that. It might move a little bit more, give or take a little bit. And if I'm going back and I'm the person who folds too much, I'm probably feeling this right hand, for me at least, and I think a lot of people would feel that right arm probably pushing Push away, away. Yeah. just to get to 90. Yeah. And, and that's why I really like these checkpoints as an average or a model is like, if someone's saying, hey, how do I know if I've done it enough? How, how much do I need to do it? When you're recording yourself and checking, you're looking for 90. Yeah. It's yeah. like a ballpark. Give or take. Give yeah. or take 90. Mm -hmm. So if you are someone and you're watching and you overfold the way back, check your pivot mm -hmm. and utilize this split hand grip with the pushing of the trail arm away now if you're normally 45 and we want to go to 90 it'll likely feel like 180 or yeah. straight yeah you know like almost no bend for that yeah. and that's why like we always talk about it in the community right you've got to be able to understand what you're working on when you're in your form-based practice you need your camera you need your and, camera. and this is a, a front-facing camera necessity to look at or at least a, a mirror perfect now, as we start to come down, we kind of call that fault number one. I would say mm -hmm. fault number two, for a variety of reasons, starting with poor pivot. Um, we were joking off camera, we could do a pivot video, like every video, right? Yeah. It's part of everything. <laughs> is we would both tend to see the trail arm uh, straightening too much too soon. Yes. Too much too soon. Mm -hmm. And so just like this, this guy, right, or gal, is if I'm straightening too much too soon, I've always got to feel the opposite and exaggerate. Yeah. Too straight, too soon. The opposite of too straight is bent. Yeah. Too soon would be too long, yeah. right? So the feel there, uh, would you have someone feel like, hey, that right arm is going to basically stay bent? They're going to feel like maybe it stays bent forever. Yeah. Or even and, into the fall. And, and even then, like, I might even start with somebody because they might still do it too much. So if you kind of get into your split hand grip, yeah. you can go ahead and get it all the way to the top, right? So now we need to kind of load that right arm a little bit more on the way down, and then you would just pivot as you let the, yeah, to get okay. that club there. So, okay. So, so I, I can almost utilize this and even just feel like I'm keeping that bend. Yeah, to me. How do I get the butt of the club to this point if I've bent it? Got A it, lot okay. of people are trying to get that club back down to the golf ball. Like there you way. go, right there. Yeah, I like that. So you gotta imagine a wall right here. You know, we start to look at like short arc follow throughs, you look at the gear stuff, you see a lot of tall players with the butt of the club at the left leg. Yeah. Right, at, at neutral zero, trying to get it all the way over there. Because it's an interesting thing, Dennis. It's like, you know, I, I mean, over half the f swings that I see, if someone's a new member, swing number one, I'm getting the arm more bent and more external. Yeah. At least 50% of them. Yeah. I, I'm saying that too. And I would say close to the same thing with the width and pivot on the way back. Yep. 
and maybe you know 80 percent have the trail arm too straight uh, too early yes and so it's an interesting thing if we're going to build that model and it's like a little more bent with the elbow towards the stomach probably for most people a little straighter longer yeah. And then a little bit more bent longer. Yeah, and they right? might they might need to feel like the arms are completely dead to be able to get to that. Yeah, like yeah. I'm not going to do much with the arms, and I'm going to get the the hands and the club to get transported to the top a little all bit body. more with pivot or body. But that's again another another piece there. But again, yeah. you just got to get people to understand like a little less arms for them would be real good. Yeah, it's almost even like for that player, they might not even want to consciously do the. Um, like you said, it depends on the person. Yeah. But they, it, for sure, during the downswing, especially with the, we want someone to really throw it kind of here. Yes. Most people are at the zero one eighty here. Yeah. So in terms of like, uh, we were talking about a club toss. Yeah. That player probably needs to feel like the right arm stays bent all the way until. Yeah. Out this way. Like they'd be throwing it almost, you know. How would you define that this angle? Way, yeah. yeah, right. Up to the <laughs> sky, yeah, right? They'd have to feel, yeah. Because Dennis was saying, we were talking before, kind of with the throw, is like, hey, if I was throwing this club out towards the target, we would see most people doing the throw kind of back this way. Yeah. And we want to have the intention of throwing the club, but yeah, maybe even Higher, up above the depends, horizon, yeah. almost even like this way, Yeah. up there. And for me to do that, when I do that well, it's a sensation that, that trail arm stays more bent longer. And I want to dig into on your gears, and that's probably a separate video. Yeah. There's some of the arm rotation pieces that go into that. Yeah. Like a separate piece. But in terms of right arm throw, we gave the simple answer up front, which is uh, about kind of this 45 degree pass impact. Yes. That's kind of the answer. Uh, the issues we see start with the setup. Mm -hmm. A lot of times during the backs and the arm getting too bent because of the pivot. Yes. And then the arm getting too straight. And kind of essentially with those drills, you know, whether I'm feeling a push away here, whether I'm feeling like I'm tossing the club up past yeah. the horizon, it's an exaggeration in the opposite spectrum. spectrum to and get again, to that's where the, the, the camera is so important. We, we kind of stress it all the time. Yeah. Right? We people talk about get, that every day on there. People get too riled up or worked up over, I need to feel something. Your feels might change, right? You're I'll trying to it. adjust to the look. You always and adjust your feel, feel to a checkpoint. Yeah. And what's the checkpoint until I get there? Yeah, then you yeah. always ask people, what do you feel? It feels weird. Well, of course it's gonna feel weird. Sure. But you have to be able to, how do you how do you go out and practice tomorrow and replay weird? And people look at me, well, how, how, you're gonna leave me today. Yeah, you got it down today. You're gonna yep. go to the range tomorrow. How do you replay weird? Video is my answer. Yeah, well again, I, I would also say that, Separate but you would have a concept, yep. right? I wouldn't wanna be weird. I'd just say that, hey, my arm is bending too much. I would wanna feel like it's gonna be way straighter. That would be the concept that I'd be chasing to, to adjust the feel on the camera. Concept, feels, video, feedback, adjust your feel per what the camera's telling you. Yeah. Feels come and go, checkpoints live on forever. Exactly. It's my, Until uh, you own it. Sandlot line thing. Yeah, right. Yeah, legends live forever. Dennis, appreciate it. There's much more to talk about here, guys, in terms of, um, like maybe we'll do the next video, the shoulder rotations, now mm -hmm. that plays a role. There's, there's other things here. Um, but you guys wanted to know about the trail arm straightening. That's the answer. That's the gears. That's Dennis. Thank you guys for watching. We'll put a, a, a card in the screen if you want to know more about the trail arm. We've got about 100 of them. So we're going to put another card in the screen. We'll put a card for GornoGolf.com. You can work with me and Dennis online there. We'd love to see you there. Thanks, dude. Thank you. Thank you.